Hey there team, and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to some more Xeno Nuits 2. Right, where were we? Scarlet had a little bit of a tantrum about the spaceships. He's gonna leave that in the past. I, I, the, there's only really two options for it. Get it off your chest, and then beyond that, either stop playing the game, or try and beat the game at its own game. Okay, those are the rules, we'll work within the rules, that's fine. Um, so we really want, even though I set up the Europe base, the Soviet Union base, the panic in Asia Pacific is not good. However, oh, I, yeah, we're, we're building the lift still. 400,000. The door was closed for a reason, Commander. Get out of here, loser. I. So this base, anyone that followed me playing the first game knows what's going on here, right? We've sort of established, and this game's actually concreted even more, that you only really want one base to deploy dudes from. At least that's how it seems to be. The range and, and issues for the Chinook type transport uh, helo were a bit more prominent in the first game, but still wasn't that a big deal. You could pretty much dispatch to anywhere in the world. In this, it's, it's, it's totally, it feels totally different. It honestly feels like you just want a central HQ for all your soldiers to deploy from. And then the other ones are just uh, radar dispatches for, uh, for fighter craft, all right? So this is just gonna be hangars uh, and radars, I suppose. Um, however, I think to myself, maybe loading it up with engineers if only just to, to turn more profit might be a legitimate move. Uh, from what I understand, I don't think there's a compounding cost to hiring engineers. All right, engineers cost, well, I can't, I can't even figure out the costing there. Oh, you could fire them, right. $25,000 a pop. So I guess you pay their first sort of month's wage when you hire them. Sort of sounds about right. That's a training center. Hmm. Get that training capacity up. Okay. Yeah. What's this in here? Storeroom. Workshop. Mm. I wonder. I mean, if we've got the living capacity, maybe we should just be filling it with engineers, you know? Well, regardless, situation uh, no change. We have very little funds. That much is true. No further work is assigned for engineering. Right. So see how it says I don't have the sniper or machine gun? I think that's because it's being carried by dudes currently. Hmm. Um... I really don't want to miss out on producing weapons and all that sort of stuff, but I feel like getting that passive income is going to be helpful. Oh, here we go. Quantum teleportation. I've long believed that the aliens are using some form of faster than light FTL drive to visit our world, and I have now finally validated my theories by identifying the UFO component responsible. <clears throat> Although the exact mechanism is still unclear, this alien hyperdrive appears to work via the principles of quantum teleportation. Fanciful though it may sound, this apparently allows the vessel to instantaneously jump to a new location without needing to traverse the intervening space. Now enemies possess viable FTL technology, or possessing the technology would explain uh, much about the invasion that is otherwise difficult to understand. Most notably, the fact that the cosmic distances 
uh, so unimaginably fast that conducting interstellar warfare should be virtually impossible in practice. Furthermore, it would also explain the origin of the strange quantum disturbances that I have been using to track extraterrestrial activity and the unusually abrupt manner in which alien craft appear to enter and exit our skies. While this knowledge alone brings us no closer to discovering the source of the invasion, gaining access to the hyperdrive and its navigational systems may provide the information that we need. Unfortunately, the device stubbornly refuses to respond to our signals. This does not mean it is uninterested in communication, however. It is continually probing its surroundings with a repeating signal. The only observed response came from the electronic components within a Mentark corpse, which appeared to establish a channel with the hyperdrive. But with the creature dead, no data was ultimately exchanged. Given Mentarks are themselves bizarre creations of unknown purpose, it is certainly plausible that they play some role in the alien hyperdrive system. I therefore suggest you attempt to capture one alive. Oh, okay. All right, okay. I see what you're, what you're saying. Assign project. Well, this is the shortest time, so we'll do that. Laser weaponry. Development of an array of handheld laser weapons for our soldiers to use. These are likely to be significantly more powerful than ballistic weapons. <laughs> Ooh, sounds good. All right, now what's going on here, Soviet Union? Right, the radar's still building. That makes sense. Access lifts finished in Asia Pacific. That's fine. Oh, here we go. UFO, 2,100 kilometers. Weren't they 1,800? This might be new. Tail until overland. Absolutely. Auto resolve attack. Now, someone pointed out I haven't really done aerial combat, right? What I might do is let's auto resolve. And we got the interception. Ignore and fight battle manually. You know what I mean? Like, this gives us an idea that we should be able to win this. Let's do it. This looks almost identical to the first game. What is this? Is that like a deployment zone? The air combat layer is fully playable, but much is much less polished and balanced than the rest of the game. It will receive a major visual and gameplay update during early access. Okay, sure. There we go. Look at that. So he might have like a rear firing gun by the look of it. Hmm. Destroyer. What are these? Oh, these are deployments. Let's do that one. Horizontal line rear. I'm going to turn off all your... Oh, what's the arc on it? That's crazy. You know what? I'll let you both fire a sidewinder each. Because once we unpause, the, the, they sort of just autopilot. Jesus, go again, boys. Go again. Eee! Oh, dude, he's hosing him. Oh, wow. Except result, I suppose. I, I could have handled that a lot better. Okay, well, that's fine, but that's that's part and parcel. At least it worked. Collect bounty. The bounty's even higher. wonder why that is. UFO class destroyer. It could be just because it's a, a destroyer. Right, there's more going on there. We need the money. So we're going to collect the bounty as much as I would like to 
go in for it. Launch interceptors. 26% health. Ugh, yeah. Might be stitched here. It's another destroyer. Auto resolve. Interception failed. Ignore and fight battle manually. I mean, health zero. Might as well. I guess my time was coming. Alright, let's go. Oh yeah. It was always destined to be bad. Um, okay, that's fine. Accept results. So I think our cars are going to be getting repaired for a while. <gasps> Is it attacking my base? What is this? Base under attack? No defensive batteries present. UFO lands and alien assault teams disembark at full strength. Base personnel preparing for defensive operation. Equip defenders. What is this? This is this is rad. Yeah, right. I don't think I've dealt with this before. Okay, what do we got? We've got another. We've got a pistol. Right? Now, what's the minimum entry strength? 51. Let's get a shield. No, see. Alright, we want more than 51 strength. 54? How would you go? Nope. Sixty-four. Yana Chekova. Let's go, lady. Alright, so we're going to give you that. I'm going to give you this. Yeah, that's the right ammo. We do have Warden armor. Though we'll, we'll save that for... You know, if people can wear the Defender armor, then so be it. Um, we're going to need a shotgunner. And I think the same thing is going to be... Well, the same, that we might need a little bit of extra strength for a shotgun. Assault. There we go, perfect. All right, you can have that. Do we have anything else? We've got a rifle. We've got an accelerated rifle. Um, so let's have a look. Who's got... Can I... I don't think I can sort by statistic. Accuracy, 69. 70, but you're already a heavy, so... Let's just leave you up there, mate. We won't, we won't rock the apple cart. Though, his carry right weight, what is your strength? 47? Oh, no. You might as well stay that. Um, accuracy, 69. It's gonna, that's going to be hard to beat. Put you back to Rifleman. Um. 51, 59, 66. You're my dedicated shield. And your assault as well. We'll put you up there. Jeez, what's going on with this bloke? 35 strength. Come on, mate. Do some bloody push ups, you sad boy. Um, Are these guys going to fight? Just with reduced health. I think maybe they will. I'm not going to mess with them. Um, yeah, I think, what was it? 60, 69. Oh, she's already got the rifle. That's great. Uh, 51, 68. There we go. You can have another one. All right. Cool beans. Now let's just have a quick squiz. See now, see how it says carry weight, 66 pips. How much does the defender armor... Does 20. 
Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So they need 20 play. I mean, that's close. I, you know what I feel is that I might actually just load everyone up with armor. If only because we're defending. I've got a billion dudes and I'm defending. See, look at you. You're so piss weak. I'm not giving you anything. You know what? I might even give you warden armor. Nope. Apparently that... I thought this had much reduced carry weight. Weight 12. Eighty-four. There you go. You can have the wooden armor. Nah, bugger it. No armor. If you can't carry it, you can't have it. All right. I think we're good. We're good for those specialist kits. What are we missing potentially? A grenadier. Um. Fifty-nine. Sixty-six. You know what? We're going to make you a grenadier. Could use one up here. And I think I'm happy with that. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. And, yep, yeah, cool. All right. Let's um, launch dropship. I don't know if that's really a thing, but okay. Seems we're under attack. Jeez, we could wipe here. We could brick. If we do, I'll still keep playing. <laughs> I'll, I'll just start again. I'm having I'm having too much fun. I know I did get stuck on some issues. And I don't want to circle back to it. But 90% of this game is a blast. So let's see what this looks like. So it's my actual base layout that I've built and I haven't thought about at all when I built it. Very good. Eliminate all hostile units. Defeating this mission will lead to permanent loss of the base. You can deploy your units onto the green before the battle begins. The aliens will have the first turn. Enemy assault teams will usually spawn in hangars where possible. However, certain types of aliens Reapers are capable of spawning in any very any room. Don't tell me that. Jesus. So you have to spawn in the access lift. Well, where are the hangers? Up here. Okay. Um. What do we reckon is going to be the best? Way to do look how many dudes I've got. This is sick. Oh, this is gonna be a bloodbath. I can feel it already. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Open my lift door, see how that goes. Alright. Hello. Sucked in. <gasps> what the fuck is that? Run away.
back out. Think about this. I suppose standing in fire is probably not good for you. Form of bloody firing line, hey? Yes, I think that works. Nice. Yes. Oh, he gets a go, does he? Just little. Peek and shoot, peek and shoot. Scoot and shoot. Oh, mate. Put him down. Bugger. Poor old Andrew, the Storbs Storsby. He's like, oh, I bloody stacked all those shelves, man. Oh, my God. How many of them are there coming in? That door's open as well. That's not good. No. Guess he's going that way then. Just keep blowing up these things. Let's go, in turn. No, that's right, I don't care. Jesus, what sort of bad shot was that, mate? Oh no. Oh god, I shouldn't have put you right in front of him. Oh, I guess it worked out in the end. Oh well, sort of worked out. Depends how you look at it. Oh my goodness. Oh, why did I put them all in a line? <laughs> oh man. It's getting framey, isn't it? Nice. 
Nice. Oh, you throw a dip pack at him. Oh! Mate, taking names. This bloke's decided to take the long way. Sixty percent. So he can see over that. It's just crap. Okay, you can use it as cover. Interesting. Okay. go. Someone's bleeding. I ain't got time to bleed. Oh my god. They are overrunning me. How do you not have enough time points? That's awkward. Hmm. Oi! Oh, I should have stunned him, he had one health. Did you heal her? What the hell just happened then? I'm getting like a stutter. Oh, what? Burr? Good work checking those corners, Scarlet, you goober. Hilda, you can be the medic. Wait, what do you mean you don't have enough points? How about you get out of the road? And you do that. Okay. Jeez, I've killed a few. We've come a long way.
bombing dudes up on the doors seems to be sensible. Aha. Oh, for crying out loud. Please stop killing my dudes. I'm going to stitch this bloke right up. Oh, is that the last one? Woos. Alright, that wasn't so bad. I think we should probably build defences. <laughs> probably not a bad idea. Or, you know, just... You could argue all this started when I uh, chose not to auto-resolve the flight combat and then screwed that up and, and then calamity ensues from there. Killed in action. Killed in action. Oh my goodness. It's a lot of dead dudes. Reaper corpse. Autopsy Reaper. Oh my god. Larval infestation. The Reaper is a biological weapon of mass destruction, an insectoid nightmare with a horrifying method of reproduction and chitin blades strong enough to pierce steel. These parasitic creatures implant their larva inside dying organisms, leaving them shambling around in a state of damned half-life while being metabolized from within by the gestating larva. Ooh, yuck. After an implausibly short period, a fully developed Reaper will emerge from the remnants of its host and begin to search for fresh victims. Oh, it's alien. Reapers are well adapted to the task of finding and infesting their targets. They have highly developed sensory organs and can move across the battlefield with hum inhuman speed, utterly fearless in the pursuit of their prey and thus impossible to suppress. They hunt, their, uh, hunt using a pair of retractable chitin spears sheathed atop their forearms. These can be extended forward with astonishing force, easily piercing most armor. A muscular contraction then injects a lava along the hollow interior and into the wound. So does it go into the to dead or anyone that they hit? Oh, that's awful. Should good fortune or adequate protective gear somehow allow the victim to survive, these are easy to remove, but in most cases, a single attack will prove, prove fatal. The alarming potential for these creatures to multiply rapidly on the battlefield should thus be obvious, especially in environments where large numbers of civilians are present. Oh, that's a good point. Thankfully, these primal horrors lack ranged weaponry and have only rudimentary swarm intelligence. They are therefore as harmless at distance as they are deadly up close. Oh my god. I didn't need that nightmare fuel, but there it is. All right, well, another one in the bank team. Uh, base defended for now. Uh, we might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.